Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another mini lesson um, in uh, the Move Create Practice group. Uh, yesterday we had a great lesson from uh, taught by Paul, um, and I hope everyone tuned into that and maybe they um, they had some they had a good time. Uh, today we have a, another amazing uh, Feldenkrais practitioner um, called Erafili. She's based in Greece, in Athens. Um, and I had the pleasure of interviewing her before um, for the, um, the Face uh, Feldenkrais Awareness Summit um, that was a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased that we've, we've managed to bring her on to this um, mini lessons as well. Um, so without further ado, here's Erafili. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Um, so, yeah, I guess um, a little bit about you, uh, you know, maybe what you're interested in, your background, um, sure. just so have a, you know, a bit of context. Mm -hmm. Well, this theme of creativity is, is really at home for me because my, my actual degree was in graphic design. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think there's... For me, this idea of, of maturation that we're trying to find in Feldenkrais mm. uh, has a lot in common with the creative process as well. And one angle that I'm particularly interested in is this, this idea of getting comfortable with the unknown, mm. of uh, being able you know, to, to, to experiment and, and not get attached to things, to, to let go. So the creative process is like that as well. And when I was in a, in a graphic design school, one of my uh, most difficult problems I had was when I got in a, an image in my head of what I, it is that I wanted to do. And then trying to do it, in reality, it wouldn't, you know, come out right. Mm. And then I would try to fix it and I would fixate on it. And instead of, you know, scrapping it or maybe, you know, change the idea somehow, I would get stuck with this idea in my head. And I think that body image is a lot like that too. Mm -hmm. So we kind of get stuck with, with our body image because it feels safe and it feels familiar. Could you so, maybe explain what you mean by body image? Just oh, yes. Uh, yes, yes. No, I mean the, the way we, we sense ourselves. And mm -hmm. like, for example, this is a very good one. Uh, when, I, when I had a baby, I thought that I was very skinny until two years after when I saw pictures and I was like, oh, I'm fat. And by the time I, I got skinny, well, not skinny, but like thinner again, I still felt fat. And I found that, you know, there was a delay in the way I would view myself because my body was changing in such... Um, such a lot of uh, uh, different ways fast, my brain had a delay. And I would always be behind my image. And I would look at videos and audios from six months before or a year before. And I, I couldn't believe that that was me. So mm. uh, for me, identifying with the, with the body is, is also making it kind of like an object. And the body is more of a process than, than an object. Mm. So this is the idea I, I intended to look into with, uh, with this, um, this lesson I call Body Prints. Yeah. Uh, it, it was inspired by this guy, Yves Klein. This is one of his works. And what he would do is um, he would paint bodies mm -hmm. in this very beautiful blue, which is copyrighted to his name. It's a Klein blue. It's and very Greek blue as well. Yeah, <laughs> and he would he would um, get people on sheets of, of paper or canvas, and he would make this these body prints, and they were they would be you know different shapes and and you know how we we have images uh, we ha we can visualize things. So if you close your eyes and I I uh, ask you to think of a fingerprint, the idea is very clear for you. Almost mm -hmm. everybody can envision, can imagine a fingerprint. And it's the same with, uh, with a footprint. If I ask you to think of a footprint, you, maybe you're thinking of, um, you know, wet footprints on concrete or, you know, on the beach or 
I don't know if you have another idea, you can write it in the, in the chat also. And, well, if you think of a body print, it's, it's not so clear because it's not something we're used to think about. So starting from, from this image of, you know, being a stamp and printing your body, uh, we will do a lesson lying down and we will explore how this body print changes with awareness and with a few movements. Sounds great. Um, so I forgot at the beginning just to remind people that um, uh, part of the reason that we're running um, these uh, free mini lessons um, is to do with um, Tiffany's uh, three free days of library access, uh, which you can access via some of the posts in here and also on her website. Um, she also has two upcoming uh, workshops tomorrow, one at 11 a.m. Um, EDT and one at 1 p.m. EDT. Um, so I just remind people at the beginning, um, if they're watching, if they're interested in that, um, the lesson tomorrow at 11 is emotional intelligence. Um, and then there's an introduction at one o'clock with Deborah Bowes, an introduction to mind mapping. Um, and she's going to teach a face lesson as well. So um, both of those things are very interesting. Sorry, I apologize for interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. And I think there might be some of my lessons in that library as well. There will be shortly with, but not the lesson I use, the, the public lessons for YouTube, but the extended versions I do for Patreon. Great. Hmm? Perfect. Yeah. So shall we start? Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll give you the stage and just invite me back when you're ready. Okay. So <clears throat> we will be starting with a body scan because this is the whole idea. So um, please come to the floor and take a few moments to feel the way you contact the floor. We usually think when we first slide down that this is it, we're relaxed. But as we progress, we see that, you know, more and more muscle tension can let go. And take a few moments to feel and imagine this, this body print. Could be blue, it could be your favorite color. Just imagine if you were a stamp, how would your body visualize now? Which places are heavier and the color is more dense and which places it's lighter? Now, bend your knees and gently press your feet down. And press them down until you can feel that your pelvis is getting lighter. So you kind of feel this lever. As your feet get heavier, your pelvis gets lighter. And let your pelvis come down. And now very gently think of sliding your feet away. Just for a few times, slide your feet away. And feel the shape of your pelvis and the shape of your lower back. What happens as your feet elongate, how your shape changes. And the slower you go, the clearer the image will be. So as you gently slide your feet away, the movement begins in your pelvis and then it comes up your lower back and then you can feel the change of the contact through your spine. Now the next time you bend your knees, stay there with your feet on the ground. And I want you to find something different than the lever lifting of the pelvis we did before. So think of sliding your feet away as if you were going to slide away, but now they're stuck on the ground and there's friction. So you're pressing down your feet, but not in a vertical way, but in a bit of a diagonal direction. So you start pressing down and away, but not so much 
that the feet slides. It stays in place. And as you do that, this pressing in this direction, as if you were going to go slide your feet away, notice what happens to your pelvis now. The pelvis is not lifting as before. It's tilting a bit backwards. So we will be exploring some variations of what in yoga we call the bridge pose. But I want you to have this difference of how you press your feet very clear before we begin. Can you play between those two movements? Can you, for a few times, press down on your feet and lift your pelvis and feel this leverage? And then, for a few times, can you press down and away and find this tilting movement now of the pelvis? So you press down and away and your pelvis rocks back instead of lifting. And let that go. Let your feet be long and rest. And I, I never, being coming from yoga and dance, I never understood what this resting thing is in Feldenkrais. I was like, it's not such a hard physical activity, but it is a mental activity. So for me, resting has not been so much about resting our bodies, especially in those very slow movements, but of resting the attention. Can you, for a few breaths, forget everything, let your attention roam free? And then with your next breath, bring it back to your body, refreshed. So we will be taking now our first print. And this print is different than the previous because this print I want you to remember. I want you to remember until the end of the lesson so you can be able to compare. We'll be doing it three times. So take a few moments to really feel how the weight is being distributed on the ground, the weight in each shoulder, and the feeling of your ribs touching your, the ground and the lower back and hips, the weight in your calves, in your heels. Can you find a clear body print? Can you make the image clear in your mind, in your mind's eye? And now, bend your left knee only. So now your left knee is bent, your left foot is standing. And very gently, you're going to be pressing through your left foot. And we want to find again this pressing of down and forward, slightly forward, so that your pelvis doesn't lift, but it rolls on the floor. So press and release, keeping your knees looking towards the ceiling so that your knees don't come in, your knee doesn't come inward or outward. Press down through your foot, down and away, and feel how your left hip is getting lighter and how your pelvis is gently rolling now to the right and back. And can you follow this movement up your spine? Can you allow the whisper of the movement to be heard? Keep your breath soft and deep. And feel how is your body rolling now on the floor? How is the weight shifting in your lower back, in your ribs? from your left shoulder blade to your right. And now, the next time your hip comes down, could you hug yourself so that your arms are not crossed, but your elbows are stacked one on top of the other, and each hand is in the opposite shoulder? So you're hugging yourself, and again, in this position, you start pressing through your left foot, 
rolling your pelvis, rolling your ribs, and noticing now where do your elbows look? How do your elbows turn? Can you allow a bit more space now between your shoulder blades as your arms have come forward? And can you feel the rolling between your shoulder blades? The space that is usually hidden. Very gently, you press and you roll. And this rolling movement is effortless, like Soft and effortless, you know, like the painter's roll. Let your arms come down and just a few more times, press through your left foot, roll and feel the movement as it goes up your spine. Is the back of your head following and rolling as well? Let your left foot be long now. Just a few breaths to release your attention, to rest. And although from time to time so I'm not very much a fan of symmetry, Today, we will be doing the other side. So bend your right knee, stand your right foot. Press through your foot again in this sliding motion to allow your pelvis to roll and to feel the movement come up your lower back and your spine. The second time, it's easier to find the movement because you know, you know what you're doing. But can you feel now, although it's easier in the the way that you know what you're doing, how is the, the sensation of the body? Is this side rolling, twisting easier? Which side do you prefer to roll in? So just a few times you press down and you roll and you feel the weight and you feel the body print changing so now it's, it's not a painting anymore, it's, it's video art. And what happens if you hug yourself now? And in hugging yourself, how did you do that? Which arm was on top? Could you change your arms and see if it feels strange and unusual? Is it easier for you to keep the previous configuration? Can you try doing it a few times, changing your arms and seeing if it's just habit that makes it feel different? Or if it's really uncomfortable, it's, there is a real difference to it. Or if, as you do and you try, one and then the other configuration, it slowly blurs and becomes easier to do both. And the difference gets smaller. There is no right and wrong. We're, we're not looking for, for concrete answers. We're just exploring. And let your arms go. And again, for a few times, you press through your foot and you feel how do you roll, how does... Your body print changes. How is the movement of turning now for you? And come back to center. Let your legs be long. A deep breath to release your attention just for a few seconds. And bring it back to your body. 
And let's take now a moment to sketch out our second body print. Feel the space between your shoulder blades and the way your ribs touch the ground, your lower back and your hips, your feet and arms. Can you remember your first body print and bring them next to each other in your mind's eye? Keeping a clear idea of those two body prints, bend both knees now. And again, we're going to be using the same movement. We press down a little, and a little bit forward so that the pelvis doesn't lift, but it rolls and lifts. And we're going to continue to press down now. So as your pelvis rolls back, the weight comes to your lower back and gently you start coming up the spine, you're going up in bridge pose. And maybe you would need to bring your shoulder blades a bit together so you make sure there is no weight in the, the back of your neck. And you stay in your bridge pose for a breath. And then again with your next inhale, very, very slowly, Bring it down vertebra by vertebra so you're rolling your weight now up and down your back. And you bring your lower back and then your pelvis down. And you take a breath and again you push through your feet, roll your pelvis back and start lifting one vertebra after the other. Can you really feel the movement shifting and rolling inside you. How much of your back do you feel on the floor as you roll up and down? Feel the width of this movement now on the floor. And the next time you come up to bridge pose, bring your weight more onto your right side, onto your right shoulder blade. So it's something like 60-40 or 70-30. And with more weight in your right shoulder blade, can you begin now to roll your weight up and down your back, but to the right of your spine. So now you come down from your right shoulder blades, you roll the weight down to the right ribs, to the right side of your lower back, and your right hip. You take a breath and then again pressing through your feet you roll up the right side of yourself and feel how is this movement for you now. Just a few times roll up and down slowly really feeling how the weight goes slides down so there are no gaps it's like a ball continuously rolling and the next time you come up can you change sides so now you bring more weight on your left shoulder blade and you gently gently roll down from your left shoulder blade you roll the weight to your left ribs to the left side of your lower back, onto your left hip. You take a breath and again you push your feet to start rolling your weight from your hip to your left side of your lower back, your left ribs, your left shoulder blade. How does this side feel? Is it easier? Is it more difficult? Is it cranky? Sometimes we, we don't have the words for it, these bodily sensations, especially when we're just beginning to explore them. It's, it's okay. 
I like working with images and I find, you know, just to sometimes to observe the weight and observe the, the shifting colors of the weight can be just as powerful as finding words. Oh, this left feels like this, right feels like that. So the next time now you come up, can you bring the weight again equally to your shoulder blades? And for a few times, you roll your weight back and down. You come up and down in bridge pose. And feel now, how is your back coming down on the ground? This little pathway we were rolling up or down, is it getting wider? Do you feel now that you're rolling on a highway? And then the next time your pelvis comes down, stay down, elongate your feet, take a moment to rest. Maybe even you need a physical rest now. Bridge pose isn't the easiest of movements. Take a breath and allow your Attention to roam free for a few seconds. And bring it back to your body. Now, let's make our third body print. Can you take a few moments and feel your shape and your contact with the ground? And maybe it has gotten easier. Practice might not make us perfect, but it certainly makes us better. Can you conjure up the three images in your mind now, one next to the other? Can you see their differences? And if you do, leave a comment because I'm, I'm very much interested in, in other angles and how people see these lessons. Each of us have such different ways of, of imagining. I find it very interesting. Bring your knees now, no, your, uh, excuse me, your left knee now. Bend your left knee. You keep your right one down. You press through your left foot and gently roll. So we find this diagonal path again, this rolling on the floor. Is this path become wider too? Is it becoming a highway? Can you feel more of yourself on the floor? Does it feel heavier or lighter, wider or narrower? And then, just for a few moments, elongate your left knee, bend your right knee, and press down through your right foot to roll diagonally to the other side. And Feel how you roll on this side too. Explore the, the image. Of the body, if, if you were covered in paint, what would the mark you're living be? Very nice. So Last time, bend your knees or keep your legs straight. Take a breath to let everything go. Let your attention go.
Can you bring your attention back to your body for the last time? And keep your attention to your shape now as you come from lying to sitting and from sitting to standing. And maybe you can stop here or maybe you can just walk around the room and imagine your body print, three-dimensional now, in space. And I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And thank you for being here. Great. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hi. Hey. <laughs> so I thought I'd just pop back up. Um, so, I mean, that was... Yeah, I mean, I really like the idea that the body image is, um, sorry, before, in fact, before I ask you a question, um, just for everyone that's done the lesson, if you want to share in the comments uh, what you felt, any experiences you had, if you've got any questions for Erafili, um, then she can obviously go through afterwards and um, uh, connect with you. Um, so please do that. I would, we'd both appreciate hearing from you, and I'm sure Tiffany would as well. Yes, it's, you know, teaching uh, live is, is one thing. Teaching online, I find it like sometimes I feel like, you know, a, a pilot that's been blinded. So yeah. getting feedback is so amazing <laughs> because one of the interesting things in teaching ATM is seeing how people understand yeah. things differently and react differently. And here we're kind of blindfolded in a way. So yeah. the comments are really illuminating. Yeah, we we feed off those a little bit. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, j you know, one of the things that I wrote down was that like this process of or uh, understanding that the image that we have of ourselves is an evolving process. I mean, oh, I lost you again. Okay, Dada, you can hear me now. Yeah. Uh, this this. The, uh, the idea that um, the idea we have of ourselves is an evolving process mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, like through the lesson, you gave different examples of uh, the body image changing in some way. Um, and I just wondered if you kind of like, um, I don't know, had, had some thoughts on how that rela relates to creativity, um, because in my thought process, I'm like, so if I'm different now, then I'm going to be in five minutes and I'm a process, I'm not a fixed entity, um, then what I would create in five minutes would be very different to what I'd create now. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just wondered if you have some thoughts on that. I, I, I'm more of a... Of a of a chaos person than an order person. So for me, um, it's, it's much more difficult to get into, to, to try and analyze things. So I always try to find more ways to analyze myself and kind of contain myself in a way. Mm. Um, and, you know, they, they say there's um, lumpers and, and splitters. So there's the people who see differences in things and the people who see the similarities. I tend to see the similarities. I'm very interested in, in you know, the, the web between things. And I think that uh, I, this notion of, of changing uh, is, can be scary sometimes. And, and I think it's uh, mostly emotional, the way what holds us back. It's mostly it's fear. Mm -hmm. um, I, I used to write down everything I, I would think of. Uh, and then I, I, I thought of, you know, let it go. If, if something is important, it will show up again. It will come back. Mm. So, you know, uh, it's, I think each one of us needs to find their, their own creative process. I think it was, it was Moshe who, who said, like, you know, if you're trying to do things in a specific way that is not yours... Mm. It will not work. You need to, to find what you're bad at. Yeah. You excel in being bad in a way. So, you know, accepting your, your, uh, your difficulties and, and going with them. I think um, what, what that kind of means to me is that, you know, like if I, if I think about what you just said, like in terms of playfulness, 
you know like if you if you don't know what you're gonna like we can't really get a, like a solid idea of ourselves now and we don't really know where we're going so we might as well be playful you know like along the journey experiment try things see what works what doesn't work and you know i think it's kind of um it's it's more fun to approach life like that in some way yeah that's and and you learn more you know if if you don't constrain yourself for it being perfect or being right or I mean, I, I was uh, obsessing uh, about teaching online for years now. I had these, you know, I would write scripts and everything had to be dubbed and everything. And uh, I missed out so much on, on working online, which is so much fun, mm. because I wanted everything to be perfect. And, you know, a lot of artists are a bit control freaks. So, <laughs> so to get this idea of, you know, you're a kid, you, you're a kid with crayons, you know, let it go. Okay, you 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 want to produce the other the bad thing with the internet is is the other side of the coin which like everyone would put out something like whatever yeah so yeah no okay uh, keep your quality in your work but also you know find this this balance this flow of being also playful that's great i think that's a, a lovely place to end the lesson um so thank you so much erifili for joining thank us you. today um we uh, will be doing these uh, uh, lessons, these mini lessons on a regular basis. Um, Tiffany, I believe, will be teaching on Monday. Uh, mm -hmm. Paul will be teaching on Wednesday. Um, and then I will be featuring a different person each week and occasionally teaching myself as well. Um, so stay tuned for those classes. Um, also, um, to give everyone a, uh, just another update, um, that at the end of the month, uh, which is, I believe, tomorrow, uh, through to Sunday, uh, there's three free days of library access. Um, and Tiffany's Movement and Creativity Library is a place where you can access uh, Feldenkrais lessons. And she has like a wide uh, variety mm -hmm. of lessons there. Um, and Erophilly will at some point, I don't know if they're already up, but um, you'll, you'll have some lessons. I haven't checked, but I've, I've been through the library and uh, before for like two or three years ago, and it has like some amazing classes and yeah. I have to check it again. It's yeah, so, so three free days access tomorrow um, till Sunday. Um, and there's also, um, Tiffany is teaching a lesson at 11 um, Eastern Daylight Time um, to do with uh, emotional intelligence. Um, and Deborah Bowes, who's a Feldenkrais trainer, is teaching a, um, a, a little free introduction uh, to mind mapping um and i've had a look at the the program and what she's talking about and i'm really intrigued by it uh, personally um so i'm not so, I'm, I'm a bit like you i'm not someone that kind of organizes and plans spreadsheets we, we need this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah so um mind mapping maybe is a nice way to to um bring that together um so thank you erifili thank you I don't know if there's any way that you want people to contact you or anything you want people well, to know about. Well, I think it's somewhere up there. There's like my uh, email and my um, my website and my YouTube, Great. Instagram. I yeah. I'm so, trying to get the hang of it. <laughs> so Area Philly has a load of uh, really great short lessons on YouTube that you can access. Um, and I, again, do, were you saying that if you wanted the longer versions, um, you can send them to people um, if they oh, yeah. subscribe to your Patreon account. Yeah, yeah, I, I do have a Patreon with the longer versions and I have um, twice a week half an hour classes in Zoom, which I also record, but those are yeah. not public. They're uh, just for people who come to the classes so they can do them again. I'm yeah. a practice makes better person. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if anyone's interested in that, please uh, get in touch with their affiliate. Um, thank you all for watching. Hope thank you enjoyed you. it. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.